Our next guest, uh, coming off an incredible senior season at Troy University. This, let me just tell everybody, this was an absolute menace in opponents' backfields. 18 tackles for loss, led not the nation, the whole country with 16 sacks. Javon Solomon, welcome to the show. How are you? I am doing wonderful, and it's so good to be here and meet you right now. Yeah, you're so smiley. What about these 16 quarterbacks? They're not smiling right now. You just crush people all year. Hey, that's what it's about. You know, you know the, the momentum of the game gets you going, and this smile tends to go away when I put the helmet on, so it's all good. <laughs> Most sacks in the FBS last season. Feels like it should be pretty simple for NFL teams. Uh, if you want to draft a sack master, you've got this guy who went from four and a half in 2022 to 16 last year. You doubled your tackles for loss, too. What led to this jump? Yeah, so... um to make a long story short, I actually had surgery right before the season started um, of this season, and it was it was big. You know, I think God humbled me in a way because back in 2021, before 2022, I had 11, so I'm coming off a good hot run, and I'm thinking everything's going to be all peachy and creamy. Then you know, I go to the four and a half, and then I get surgery. So I think God humbled me in a big way uh, to maybe kind of understand where to put my put my faith in, put my mm. faith in uh, not in football. And I, I, I learned that lesson. So there was nothing willing I wasn't willing to do to get back into the game. I was working out twice a day on the field, twice a day uh, in the film room, twice a day, doing anything I could to get back to my peak form. And, uh, you know, those 16 sacks are just the fruits of my labor when I was in ground zero, sitting in my bed, couldn't move at all, you know, so. It sounds like it was a blessing in disguise. To go from four to 16 is insane. You're dealing with an injury. I think mostly mental that affects the physical of it. What do you want to say to that graduate assistant that cut up a rip of all of your pass rushing snaps from 2022, the four sack year that you apparently watched and re watched and watched and watched and watched all season? That's funny. That's, um, his name is Hunter Reese. Okay. Uh, he, he just left uh, here to go. Uh, he got his own coaching job at high school now. And I, he know, I just called him not too long ago just to tell him, like, bro, you mean the world to me, bro. And um, the the difference between my my playing style, uh, the way I was able to watch film and read tackles and study myself, truly jump exponentially just because of him. And, you know, it's a, it's a true testament to his hard work and him being willing to come sit with me at 9 o'clock or 6 a.m. just to watch me. You know, he, he, put, he put himself last and put me first. So I really appreciate him. And uh, that's my that's my guy for sure. We locked in for life. What do you think he saw in you that made him do that? Well, you know, he he was he was here at Troy not too long ago, probably like 2017. Um, they won a championship here, and I think he just seen the work ethic when he first came in, around 20. He came probably 2022, and I think he just kind of understood where. And I I, I quit to gravitate. You know, I, I love to learn from from guys of his stature and his nature, and how he goes about the game in general. So. I, I quickly laid to him and asked him questions, and I think he's seen that, and he kind of realized that, oh, hey, this kid, he, he kid wants to be great, so why not pour into him and, and kind of help him get a good good understanding of the game in a different different lane that people kind of see. Cause, you know, some people kind of throw GAs under the bus, and they don't understand that. It's like they're, they kind of they put the game plan together. The coaches come up with it, but they're, they're, yes. in the, they're all in the group, you know, playing it together, so... Like, if you get in with a GA, you kind of find the fundamentals of the game that you might not see with just watching film by yourself or just with your coach. You're attacking it at all angles, and you're all in. I can tell. I could tell from hearing that graduate assistant story, and I could tell by seeing your face light up when I mentioned him so you could give him a little love here. There's that angle, which is the deep dive, and the, that takes a lot of discipline. And then there's there's the other stuff. There's that, you know, you had an informal conversation with Mike Tomlin, I understand, which could have been probably was insane. Give me, like, this thing, in one sentence what you walked away thinking after talking to Tomlin. I can give you one word. I was like, wow. <laughs> I, was, I was stunned, you know. I tell people this all the time. Before I was a player, I was a fan of the game, so I was just—I just, just love to watch football and just be around it. So like when I when I'm walking away and I see Mike Tom, I'm like, hold on, like, hold on now. <laughs> this is this <laughs> guy, 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 I just you know, on TV for years and years, and 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 you know he and he brought me to the side and he whispered some stuff in my ear that I just kind of like it was just kind of kind of like he made me just see the game a different like you know he made me understand just something that you know maybe maybe not all people get a grasp of. And you know he like it, it kind of makes you understand that people are just people. You know people are yeah. people at the end of the day. And I just got a good gravitational pull for him and what he was telling and what he was preaching. 
It was good stuff, man. And uh, you know, my my mom's boyfriend, I call him, you know, he's my stepdad. He is a big Steelers fan. So when I first seen him, I was like, hey, I know he just got done telling me some motivation. And I'm like, hey, I love all that. Can I take a picture with you real quick? I gotta tell my, you know, just just to get that that idea, just that that fulfillment moment of this is Mike Tomlin, you know. Whether it's something Tomlin told you or somebody else, I have it on good authority that you were more than others, I think everybody probably does, at least if they're smart, they do. All of the the prospects like to ask questions, feedback, but you sort of stuck out, I heard, among GMs and coaches um, and scouts, that you want feedback. You're saying, what can I do? You're trying to absorb and learn. In every little situation that you've been in, I think that's great for you, Javon. What's the one thing that you picked up from this, from this process of the NFL questions, the prodding, the scouts? What's the one piece of feedback that you really are taking with you? Yeah, I would, I would, I would think it would just be um, initially coming into the game. You know, they said they, a lot of people will say over and over again that that this is truly different. That this is not going to be anything else you go throughout your life. This is going to be something substantially a mo- lot more. It's going to ask more of you. It's going to take more of you, and to be prepared. You know, there's there's people that come in there. You know, think they got it all, and they come in there headstrong, and then they just get sent back the other way because it's it's not what they intended. You know, so I think being prepared, um, gravitating towards the right veteran, you know, um, taking, make sure you just do your duties in, in, in your first year in the league to be able to get a good understanding of what you're doing when you're coming in. Because they're truly going to ask a lot of you and you have to be willing to be able to do everything. Mm, now, Troy has produced a couple of great pass rushers. Can't not talk about them. O.C. Miura, Hall of Famer, DeMarcus Ware, who was at a home game of yours, by the way, to have his number retired this past season. I know that you've met him. What are the conversations like uh, from these two Troy greats, especially DeMarcus, who we just saw? Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely crazy. And, like, so I actually got a chance. I think I met him three times here my my time at Troy. You know, he's a busy guy. But when he makes time to come here, it's truly, like, it's truly, like, jaw-dropping. Like, everybody in Troy wants to come see DeMarcus. So, like, when he came and he sat in the front of the team meeting room and, you know, afterwards, I, you know, everybody just trying to get that quick combo, quick conversation. I'm like, I'm like, hey, I'm like, what kind of moves work? I'm like, what do you think is better? It was like, he, and he, and he, and he took it, he took his jacket off, unbuttoned his shirt, had, had his white tee on, and he was in there showing us. He was like, he, he's in there showing me another pass rusher how. Of course. Like, me and my guy Richard, he's like, he's just showing us. He's literally demonstrating after he just got done speaking, and, and they're telling him like, Demarcus, we gotta go. And he was like, hold on, I got you. And he's like, just willing just to actually pour into somebody that. That he did, he just met five seconds ago. So like, it, it just shows you how how the bond here at Troy is. You know, um, he he's a he's a superstar, and he was willing just to just come back and and humble himself in front of a couple of guys mm. that he just met. All that just just because we all wore the same jersey, you know. So that that was that was wholesome. And he came back for a game, and you know he's supposed to just be sitting on the sideline chilling, but he's coaching. We coming over there, he's he's the best. Us, you know. Yeah, he's he's a one of a kind guy. And like you said, we got OC. Uh, we got Steve McClendon. We did, we got we got Mario Addison. We got a lot of people that just Javon came Solomon, here. who's going to pay that forward in about ten years to some other kid coming up in Troy. Okay, <laughs> you have long your 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 hands are massive. It's crazy. Long arms. The, the height comes into question. It comes in slightly shorter than what people want to say the prototype is. Finish the sentence. What you might lack in height, you make up for in what? Intensity. I think I think the way I play the game is kind of like I play I play with great instincts. I play with uh, you know a different type of physicality. I play with a lot of finesse. Um, you know I think there's a lot more to the game than you know just being six nine. You know, but I think you there's there's been great pass rushers come through here that just been nothing but dominant in the league for a long time. You know, regardless of their height, it's all about what you do in the off season, pointing to your crowd, pointing to what you can do to excel when you're actually in a moment. So yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah, like you're right. You know, the, the high thing is coming into question, but when it comes to being a football player, when you have to strap the helmet on, you know, I think I think that's where that's where everything becomes black and white. Let's go. I love it. Now, is that Boomy walking around making all that noise in the background? I did. Can, <laughs> I, can I meet Boomy? Absolutely. Not a- are you so weirded out that I know these weird things about you? Yeah, that's kind of, that's all like, okay. Uh, okay, let's yeah, meet Boomy. Tell, tell me about Boomy and the plan for the draft with you and Boomy. Look, what up? Oh, my God. Yeah, this, this is my boy. Um, I got him actually COVID year. I got him when he was four weeks old. 
He was a little, he was a little, um, you know, you're supposed to get a puppy when they're around six. And come here, Dada. And he's going to get his toy right now. Um, he came and it, it was actually kind of wholesome for me because I just love to go to college. And, I, yeah. you know, I, I ain't gonna lie, I'm a big mama boy. I love my mama. And so being away from family was kind of hard. And then so I got, I, I've been able to get my boy and it made, it made everything worthwhile. It truly is. <laughs> Um, you know, anytime, anytime Scout acting what I do on my free time, it's it's always it's always with this guy right here. This is this is the guy I'm always with, and um, <laughs> it's so wholesome. I love it. You know, this this, this is my boy. That's your now. boy, Boomy. Okay, we have one minute left. We're gonna do a rapid fire. What are you tackling next? You had 33 sacks in college. You were the nation sack leader last year. I'm gonna ask you what you're sackling next. Like, what are you gonna tackle next? What's the first text you send after you get drafted? Um, I'm saying thank God. I'm po I ain't gonna lie. I'm posting on Instagram. Say all glory to God. I'm so thankful for the opportunity. Let's get it rolling because there's nothing that's gonna be able to stop me from pursuing my. Woo! my you know? The first thing you'll eat to celebrate. Uh, we're going to Longhorn. We're probably gonna get a big old steak. Everybody is on me. I got you. <laughs> it's on you already. Okay. First thing you will Google about the city of the team that drafts you. What's the most important thing about the city wherever you go? Um, do they have a trampoline park? I love to go to trampoline park. <laughs> Such a good answer. No, Siobhan, that's the best answer I've ever heard in my entire life. How much time do we have? One minute. Okay, we're going to keep going. That's a great, that, nothing's going to top that answer. Okay, we don't know your team. We don't know your schedule. But if you could choose, who is the first NFL quarterback you'd like to get your hands on? I'm going to be honest. Oh, my God. Don't put me on the spot like that. I'm going to be honest. Uh... I don't know. It'll, it'll, any any 32, whoever has a jersey on, that's, that's what I want. That's not honest. Who do you want to get? What would put you on the map in the biggest way? You know it's Patrick. Come on. I know. And I'm beyond. I'm a huge Chiefs fan. I lo I've been a Chiefs fan. I know. Fan, and I am cool. I love Patrick Mahomes. I don't know. I can't do it too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, a first vacation a destination you'll go to once you get that that check. Um, I always, I'm, I'm half Jamaican, so I definitely have to make my pit stop around there. Okay. Love that. I, I can't. Javon Solomon, I'm a big fan. I can't, I got nothing else to say. You, Boomy, the whole nine, go Chiefs, go wherever. Uh, uh, congratulations on all the success and enjoy it, which you are. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for having me on.